We've tended to be a little uncomfortable talking about George Washington and slavery. When we think about the presidents who owned slaves, George Washington as the first president did indeed own slaves, as did his wife. At the time of his death, there were nearly 300 enslaved people living at Mount Vernon. So he was a large slaveholder. My name is Erica Armstrong Dunbar, and I'm the author of Never Caught, the Washington's relentless pursuit of their runaway slave, Ona Judge. She was an enslaved woman. She was born at Mount Vernon sometime in 1773-74, around the era of the Revolution. As Ona grew older, she was expected to learn to be a seamstress, an expert sewer, which she did indeed become. But at some point during her teenage years, she became the preferred slave of Martha Washington. She was tasked with the most intimate of responsibilities. She would help Martha Washington bathe. She would brush her hair. She would sew her clothing. She was there 24-7. She was always present, but su really supposed to be never seen, which was the role and the responsibility of, of what we call domestic slave slaves who worked inside of the household. In 1796, Ona learns disturbing news. Martha Washington's granddaughter would be married, and she knew that Martha Washington was unhappy about the marriage. There was one thing she could do to ensure that her granddaughter was prepared for marriage and a good place, she would give her the very best wedding gift she could give her, and that would be Ona Judge. So when Ona learns that she's going to be given away to Eliza Park Custis, a difficult woman, she makes the decision to run. And she leaves the Washington's house while they were eating supper, never to return. With the help of friends of the free black community in Philadelphia, she finds her way to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And George Washington would spend, literally, the rest of his life attempting to reclaim her. And Ona Judge, through her own strategic mind, through the help of friends, was able to turn away Washington's slave catchers at every turn. For 50 years, she lived as a fugitive. And we often say that those folks are free who get away from their enslavers. But in actuality, Ona was never truly free. She was simply never caught. Washington, towards the end of his life, began to reassess enslavement. At different times, he stated that he wanted to step away from slavery, from being a slaveholder. But for various reasons, he could never make it happen. We do know that at the end of his life, on his deathbed, his will um, mandated that all of his slaves were to be emancipated, were to be set free upon the death of Martha Washington. So when George Washington died, over 120 people knew that they would be set free once Martha died. George Washington did, I argue, in death what he could not do while he was living. What does this make us think about George Washington? Does it help us to, to think about him differently? I, you know, I think it's, it makes us see him as a complex person, not as simply the man on the quarter or the dollar bill, the gentleman with the powdered hair and the false teeth, but to think about him also as a human being with flaws and failures. And that, I think, gives us a deeper understanding about the founding of the nation.